I want to welcome you to the inaugural Breakthrough Fireside Chat. Um, so this, uh, you, you know, may remember us from such similar webinars as the cloud-based innovation one we did last year, also with AWS. And I think a, a theme that came out of that that's continuing a lot is um, how innovation is uh, what helped us survive 2020 and what's going to help us um, thrive in 2021. So the same um, culture and mindset um, and that uh, way of building teams and products that are resilient um, and, and a bit, uh, able to innovate is what was able to get so many businesses and, and so many teams through last year. Um, and that's what's gonna help us springboard um, from this year onwards. So uh, we'll be running these events uh, every couple of months. Um, nice sort of quick half hour fireside chat um, with various uh, tech executives um, across, uh, across the country. Uh, so I'll introduce today's um, speakers and, and let them crack into it out. Uh, our host today is uh, Katrine Pegner from uh, AWS. She's the sales leader for Mid Enterprise for New South Wales. Uh, and I'll let her sort of give a bit of an intro in a second. And, and she'll be interviewing Andy Donaldson, um, a renowned club DJ and chief technology officer for Everlight Radiology, um, uh, who's held a range of, of tech roles over the last 20 years. But I'll let them. Uh, sort of uh, tell us more about them in a second. And I'll hand over to Katrine and, and Andy. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Nick. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's great to virtually meet all of you, even though we don't get to see each other. Um, I think 2020 was an intense year, and I think it's good to hear some good news stories, and especially what have businesses been doing over that time to not just stay afloat, but actually grow their business and use innovation as a catalyst to grow their businesses. So um, I can't choose favorites, but if I would have a favorite customer, Everlight would definitely be in the top. Um, it's been a pleasure to work um, with Andy over the last uh, year. And I think getting Andy to tell his story on who is Everlight, who is Andy, what do they do and what makes them stand out um, is what this webinar is about and hopefully um, we'll hear from many more customers over the coming months on how do you innovate and how do you scale your business uh, during these times or the next normal, like uh, they're trying to call it lately. So over to you, Andy. Thank you. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, hopefully uh, what I have to say might be of interest, so uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I'm Andy Donaldson. I am a CTO, CIO uh, by background. I've been in exec tech uh, roles for the last 15 years or so. I've been in corporate technology for over 25 years. Uh, I've worked in different industries, travel and tourism, education, financial services, digital media, and now healthcare for the last few years. Um, my role is very much one of strategy and helping businesses to kind of evolve and transform and, and, and enable through technology. Uh, Everlight Radiology, which uh, it, which I'm very proud to be a part of this organisation. I've been here through three or four years. Um, is what's known as a teleradiology business. We are a telehealth business in that we provide um, a health service, a medical service over distance. Um, we we offer radiology reporting services to hospitals um, over distance in that we integrate our technology into. Uh, hospitals radiology systems so hospital typically will still take the diagnostic images for a patient uh, CTs x-rays MRIs etc we have technology that integrates with the hospital system it moves that data out of the hospital into our radiology workflow solution uh, and ultimately in front of one of our radiologists who look at the diagnostic images on their screen um, they, they dictate a, a report a prognosis uh, using medical grade dictation software which we then package up digitally and send back to the requesting hospital. So that, that's our business in a nutshell, is moving uh, diagnostic imaging data out of a hospital to our one of radiologists and then a report back to the requesting physician in the hospital. But we do that at scale and we do that over a significant distance. So we in 24 hour follow the sun emergency radiology. Uh, uh, we have radiologists in Sydney, for example, that work for us that are British trained and certified. So if someone is in a car crash in the north of England at two o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning, that hospital can send us those images. We'll put those images in front of a radiologist in Sydney. Uh, he'll create the report and we'll send that back to the United Kingdom. And most of the time we do that in under 30 minutes. So uh, that's our business. Um, Radiology reporting over distance. Um, so yeah, that's Everlight. 
Wow, no, that that's definitely more than just a nutshell, I would say. Um, obviously, you've introduced yourself, you've explained what Everlight does. What made you choose to join Everlight Radiology? Uh, I think two, two reasons, primarily. One, uh, the business was at a tipping point when I met the CEO. Um, and he and I started to talk to each other about potentially uh, you know, what, the, what, what, what technology needed to do in the organization, what the road ahead might look like and what kind of role I could play in that. And it was a tipping point in terms of uh, growth acceleration, needing technology to kind of unlock that growth and also just kind of innovation with technology. Uh, you know, by its very nature, what we do is quite new, I guess. Uh, and it's, it's, it's very technology enabled. So there were lots of challenges and lots of ideas and lots of things that needed to be done. Uh, so I was kind of excited by the prospect of that, being able to get stuck into somewhere where I could do really innovative work. Uh, and the other reason would be uh, actually uh, ethical reasons. Uh, I like the fact that we put a product into the market that is actually doing some good in the world. Um, when you're in the business of providing an emergency radiology service, uh, uh, very it's very real that it is actually life and death in some cases. There's a patient at the end of the service that uh, is reliant on uh, us doing our job well and getting a timely prognosis back to the requesting physician so they can understand what's wrong with that patient and, and, and help to uh, look after them. Uh, so I like that. I like the fact that we put a product out in the world that's doing some good and um, I'm not just selling insurance to people. So uh, that would be the reason. Well, I think both are noble causes, making the world a better place and uh, using innovation and technology as a catalyst for that. So, um, no, that's beautiful. Um, and what is Everlight's mission? What are they trying to, to achieve on this planet? I think uh, really it's, it's ultimately about the patient outcome. Um, we, we feel that we uh, fill a gap in uh, radiology that exists today in many markets, in uh, uh, many parts of the world actually have an acute shortage of radiologists. Uh, trained doctors that are able to look at the medical images and 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 give a prognosis back to a requesting physician. Uh, so our technology and our distribution allows us to be able to fill that gap in a lot of parts of the world. Uh, so by filling that gap, we are improving patient outcomes. Uh, the outcome of the patient is very much in the DNA of the organisation. We centre around that, but obviously that allows us to achieve commercial success at the same time. But I think the mission of of, of Everly is really about. Uh, filling the gap in the market and uh, the public sector and allowing us to drive better patient outcomes and, and better outcome through uh, more accessible radiology services. Wow. Um, and do you have any data or do you know anything about from a skills gap perspective? Like are there countries that have a bigger gap than others in, in radiologists? Yeah, I mean, a, a, uh, well, we operate in four uh, countries at the moment, uh, uh, Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, Republic of Ireland, uh, pretty much all of those have an acute shortage of, of uh, radiology reporting. Uh, there's lots of other parts of the world in a similar situation. Uh, I mean, put simply, the world doesn't have enough radiologists. It's really that simple. Um, and you can imagine that the, uh, you know, the amount of medical imaging devices in the world uh, has just exploded. Uh, CT scanners and x-rays and MRIs, you know, that stuff's uh, ubiquitous, uh, but the amount of trained physicians able to then do something with the, with the images that those machines create uh, has not uh, kept up with the growth. So there was a, there's a big shortage. Okay. Um, with, with shortage comes opportunity. So I would say Everlight has been a high growth company and I think probably have more data points on what that growth has looked like, especially in Europe. Um, where have you seen the most customer growth um, and what are the growth plans that you guys currently have in place? Uh, I mean, it's been across the board, really. Um, we, well, as an organization, we've been doing, you know, 20, 25, 30% per annum year on year for, for, for some time now. Um, Every, every market we go into, we're winning business and also uh, growing organically for existing contracts. Um, that's been, our, our growth has been tipped kind of in, in the larger side of the scale in the UK in recent times. 
Um, but every market is a growth market for us at the moment. So uh, we're seeing it everywhere. And I think, you know, that, that shortage of radiologists, if you were going to look at it in purely commercial terms, and you're think, going to think about a kind of supply to demand position, we're in a business where uh, demand outseeds supply significantly. Uh, so what that means is that uh, there's almost no shortage of business to be won if you're able to uh, have the capacity to fill uh, the market demand. Uh, so, you know, we've been growing uh, everywhere by every key metric that, that you would use to measure growth in an organization. Uh, uh, all of those are in positive territory and, and going well. Uh, and moving forward, uh, uh, we'll probably try to look to further international expansion over the course of the, of the coming years as well. Congratulations. I mean, that's, that's a luxury problem to have. There's too much customer demand to keep up. Yep, that's um, the kind of problem you want, right? So. I can imagine many listeners on this call would be like, I wish this was me too, or how do we get there as well? Um, obviously, that's a key part of us not being dependent on one uh, geography. So what are some of the challenges of, of going global as a business and, and pro providing remote and distant services? Um, I think I think there's, there's there's been a couple for us. Um, Everlight historically was actually two organisations. So there was an Australian-based business and a UK-based business. And the UK business was a or the Australian business owned fifty percent of that as a joint venture. Uh, some years ago now, uh, the Aussie business acquired uh, the other fifty percent, uh, and then those two businesses were brought together to to form the global entity that is now Everlight Radiology. Uh, that came with some challenges of kind of globalizing both the workforce and the technology because you had two separate businesses, separate org charts, separate stacks of tech. Um, most of those challenges have been kind of overcome, um, but there was, there was a bit of work to do to kind of get the organization humming as one entity, if you like. Um, so there was, you know, there's, there's kind of uh, nuts and bolts to that using the same applications, using the same infrastructure, having the same operational practice, those, those sorts of things. Uh, but I also think uh, culturally getting the business kind of aligned and, and humming, there was some some work that we needed to do there. And that's that's also been pretty successful. I think the other thing is because we have kind of two global hubs, one's in Sydney, one's in London, we are in polar opposite parts of the time zone. Uh, so that's, that's always a big challenge. So uh, the business doesn't operate in a kind of nine to five manner you know not many businesses do in today's world but um uh, you have to get used to working weird and wonderful hours that ever like it comes with the territory so I'd, I'd, I'd say those were the biggest challenges that we've had to overcome yeah so you have the the geo component um one of the things you touched on was was culture um obviously you had two businesses before how do you create a global culture um as a business um, I think there's been uh, a lot of work to just communicate often and constantly and be clear about uh, strategic plans. Uh, we have, um, I guess, if you like, we have actual frameworks in the business that we use to make sure there is good communication and collaboration going on, uh, that teams are engaging with each other and with other teams. Uh, and we work on that and think about that uh, often. Um, and culture, I think the evolution of culture and the importance of culture is very much in our DNA in an, uh, as an organization. Uh, I've worked in other places before, everybody pays lip service to it, but here it's very, very real. Um, and so I think it, it, it's no one thing that kind of gets you to a point where you've got good global culture. It's, it's, it, it's the sum of many parts um, and you kind of got to get, get, get all of those parts humming. But if I were going to put my finger on one thing, I would say it's um, alignment in the mission and communication, depth of communication. Yeah. At AWS, we often say, be clear on the vision, be flexible on the detail. Um, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> I don't know if that resonates. Um, very, very much so, yeah. Um, Obviously, there's a variety of technologies that you guys use, and there's constant innovation in your industry, and, and different markets will probably need different things. Where do you see the future of, of radiology going as an industry uh, related to new, in, new innovations? Uh, well, I mean, radiology, by its very nature, is a technology-driven um, 
driven driven industry you know radiology is born from technology uh, and uh, technology technology innovation is happening within the field of radiology all the time uh, and it moves very quickly the, the obvious answer to your question though is in uh, AI and machine learning uh, like many other industries um, AI is is uh, emerging in radiology in a number of ways uh, and there's definitely AI disruption that is ha happening and will happen in the radiology industry. Um, and we're already using AI in production in, in, a, in a number of ways. I think um, for the next kind of 10 years or so, what we're going to see is uh, AI helping to maximize the use of radiology capacity. So I don't see a world uh, in, the, in the kind of near to medium term where the computer is replacing a radiologist, for example. But I think there's very definitely a world where uh, the computer is empowering the radiologist. The machine learning is empowering the radiologist uh, to be more efficient, uh, to be more accurate, um, and, and actually just helping uh, augmenting the, the doctor to do their job. Uh, and do their job sort of faster and getting better patient outcomes. So that would be the, the, the big thing, I think. Um, but there's lots of other things that are kind of chipping around the edges in terms of uh, streaming technologies, for example, which means you don't have to push as much medical imaging data around uh, and so on. But, uh, you know, it's happening everywhere and it's happening all the time. Wow. Um, the, I think you touched on something is augmenting um, the radiologists. So what are, what is it that if we would look at the radiologists of today, what are your radiologists looking for? What is it that they're needing uh, that they currently can can do, for example? Uh, I think um, the radiologists, what the radiologists want most of all is to be able to be efficient in, in creating a radiology report, because uh, you have to remember that a radiologist is a doctor and you know, their sole purpose is to try to get the best outcome for the patient. And if you have a patient in critical care, uh, you know, minutes of delay can have a significant impact on the outcome for that patient. So any radiologist, if you ask them, what do they want? They want to, they want to be efficient and they want to be able to report quickly and they want to get the best outcome for the patient. They want, also want to do that in a safe manner where they can be sure that the information being presented to them is accurate, and nothing's being missed, etc. So, uh, one of our missions in technology is to constantly think about that, worry about that, and try to improve it all of the time. Uh, and that's not something that will ever end. We'll always be striving to, to uh, give better efficiency to radiologists. And actually, in, in its essence, when you think about the job of technology at Everlight, you, you could boil it down to something quite simple. Our job is to get the data about the patient, the medical images and any metadata about the patient out of the hospital, move it around the world, get it in front of a radiologist, give the radiologist the most ex efficient user experience to be able to do their job, create the radiology report, and we send that back to the hospital as fast as possible. That movement, you know, there and back again, that, that's our mission in tech. That's what we're here to do. Um, so the RAD wants us to do that as well and as fast as possible. Okay. Now, um, you make it sound very clear for some reason, not a specialist in radiologists. Um, at AWS, we use the phrase or how we our internal methodology to innovate, and what we also use with customers is working backwards from the needs of the customer. How does Everlay Radiology work backwards from the needs of, in this case, the radiologists? Do you guys have a framework for that, or? Yeah, yeah, uh, we 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 very much take a product approach to that, a kind of modern product approach to that. We have a, a product discipline within the organization, uh, headed up by experienced pro product professionals. Uh, we understand, we try to as deeply as possible understand the needs of our customers. And when we think about customers from a product perspective, we're not just thinking about the hospital that is accessing our service and perhaps someone in that hospital is paying the invoice. We're also thinking about the radiologist specifically as a, as a key customer of our workflow product, our workflow solution, and also our own, our, our own internal operational staff that might be overseeing the workflow and making sure that everything's ru running smoothly. So we take, a, we take a product approach to all of that. We, we look at um, need, we look at gaps, uh, we, we listen to people's opinions, we weigh up as much data, you know, uh, both kind of hard data and sort of anecdotal data as we can to be able to give us an outlook about what's important for us to do next and um, what that's going to achieve and for whom. So it's very much about uh, a customer driven, customer centric approach to help us drive our kind of product outcomes and product roadmap and product innovation. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, no, I think if you're building for a customer's need, there will never be a gap of business to be had. There's always a customer that wants something faster, better, um, yeah. cheaper moving forward. Um, so what are some of the adoptions or what are some of the barriers to adoption in markets that you guys have observed or how can we help um, Everlight get across all the radiologists in the world? Um, already <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I think um, uh, the, the barriers to, a, to, to customers accessing our service um, are not that great from a technology perspective, really. Once we can, if we can get a uh, line of sight into the customer's radiology systems, uh, so whatever we need to do to be able to, you know, move through their perimeter and start moving data about, we can turn the service on. Um, the, the, the biggest challenges I think in uh, the radiology industry as a whole, and we experience these challenges, is making sure, is access to capacity, access to radiologists to be able to service demand. Um, I would say that's probably one of the, our biggest challenges. Um, and also because we work with patient data and we work in multiple markets, multiple jurisdictions, uh, we come under a lot of uh, legislation about data privacy, we operate under GDPR, Australian privacy law, so on and so forth. So, you know, that creates a kind of com quite complicated matrix of things that we have to navigate through to be able to then offer the service in that sort of regulatory world. But it's something that we're very good at and pretty mature at. Um, but I'd say that that does uh, give you an overhead if you want to enter into a new market, for example. You've got to understand what's the playing field like in that space to be able to do operate safely and securely and, and within the law. Yeah. Um, I think especially with everything becoming more global, this is definitely a consideration for, for all companies, not just for radiologists. Um, you've spoken about, you know, innovations. You've spoken about entering new markets. There's obviously one Everlight team. How does your team actually keep up with all these innovations that come your way? Um, we have a we have quite a culture of innovation within uh, within tech within within, within Everlight, um, and I guess the way that we encourage that is it's a highly collaborative environment here. So uh, ideas are shared; they're shared often. Even though you know tech function split into different departments, there's a lot of cross collaboration happening across those different areas. And I think everyone already recognises that good technology is achieved through teamwork and through cross discipline teamwork. And I think that's something that we get pretty right at Everlight. Um, and what that allows people to do is to kind of uh, cross pollinate ideas with different skill sets. And some people have awareness of what might be happening in a particular area of, of tech. Someone might be an AWS expert, for example, in a certain, say, like the compute products. Uh, someone else might be an expert in radiology imaging and the data. You know, you start to combine those disciplines. They're aware of what's happening in the market and you can start to get good ideas bubbling. I think the other thing is we, we, we're pretty good about encouraging skunk works type projects. Um, we, you know, if somebody has a good idea and they want to work on that as a bit of a side project, we always encourage those sorts of activities. And actually, uh, there was one particular initiative, I think this happened a year and a half ago. Uh, there was a couple of guys in, in IT, one was a business analyst, one was a cloud architect. They had an idea of how we might be able to use machine learning to work in some of our back office processing. Uh, we said to them, go for it. They went and ferreted around for a couple of months, emerged victorious with this new solution using Amazon Web Services machine learning, I might add. Um, and it was a game changer. I don't think I've seen a bigger return on investment on any piece of work ever in my entire career. Uh, and that literally came out of two guys with an idea that just wanted to ferret around in their spare time and see what they could come up with. So uh, we always encourage those sorts of activities in the organization. Oh, that's amazing. And obviously, you can abuse this platform by saying, are you guys hiring anybody at the moment? Or are you looking for some talented individuals? Uh, we are hiring, actually, at the moment, um, uh, in a number of different places right now. Um, uh, we're actually scaling up the tech capability a little bit at the moment. Um, but we also uh, try to develop with, from within as well. Uh, I'm very I'm very passionate about giving talented people the opportunity to grow in their careers and and to move into kind of new roles and the opportunity. 
I'm very much a product of that myself. Uh, earlier in my career, I was very, very lucky to work for people that saw a kind of young, immature Andy Donaldson that uh, had a little bit of spark, and uh, and they, you know, they 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 took their time out to uh, invest in me and and help me. And so, uh, I it's, I'm very passionate about wanting to pay that forward and pass it on to other people. So. Uh, hopefully we do have a culture of growth and, and personal development and career development within the organization as well. Ah, that's amazing. And um, how do you keep on innovating with the people that you have? Like, is it through, through the DNA or is there other, other things that you might do or experiments that you've run? Uh, well, I think, I think, I mean, we've got so much, there's so much we want to do in technology. Um, uh, you know, we could, we could, I, I could be sitting here in 10 years time, still with a list as long as my arm that, uh, and all of that requires innovation. Um, I, you know, I, I, I ha we have a pretty good shared architectural vision of where we want to be in two or three years time, but you know, it's a big, big picture vision. There's awful, an awful amount of, uh, innovation detail that needs to happen under the hood of that picture to unlock it. Um, and I have a good idea of, how it's going to get unlocked in a number of key places because we've done the work. I have no idea in other parts of it how we're going to do it all, but I know we'll, we'll do it. But what, 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 what we're going to need is all of the skilled people with all the right disciplines coming together again, as they have done over the past few years to, to solve the problem and come up with an answer to that technology challenge, you know? So I think that's one of the exciting things about working here. And I think why, why uh, lots of people do want to join Everlight is because uh, that work is happening all the time. So, you know, if you're, if you're a technologist by trade and most technologists that, uh, most people are in the game of technology because they want to innovate and they like technology and they want to build solutions. We've got that bucket loads, you know, there's uh, there's more than, more than, than, than we can ever get to. So that's never going to go away. So what would you say is the key skill uh, that you look for in people when you hire them? Cultural fit, 100%. Um, we want we always look for people that are going to come and be part of the team journey in technology here uh, and that doesn't mean you have to be the kind of loudest voice in the room or you know super super noisy and outgoing you can still be quiet um, and we have people in in technology here that are quite quiet sort of people but they are uh, they they'll contribute they put ideas forward uh, they're part of the conversation because ultimately uh, good technology comes out of team um collaboration that you know that that's what it's born of and and i believe that passionately that technology is um you know a collaborative uh i forgot what the word i was looking for but you know it's a collaborative team team um team outcome uh and if we were hiring for someone and let's say we're looking for five um technical skills and they have three and a half uh we can teach them the other one and a half that we need because uh, you know tech skills are kind of relatively easy to to uh, pick up if you're a good technology person. Uh, how you operate as part of a team and how you might uh, be culturally and how you work with your peers that's something that you tend to we tend to need you to come to the table with. So I say first and foremost, it's cultural fit that, that we look for. Yeah. Now um, maybe maybe a final one before Nick um, asks me to stop talking for a second uh, would be. What would your advice be to other Aussie companies listening uh, on this call today? Hire the best people you can afford and get out of their way. <laughs> uh, or, 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 almost as simple as that. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I make it sound simple, but um, you know, it, it, it's it's all about the talent that you have, the people that you have in your organisation, and what are what's going to make you successful or not. Um, we're really lucky that we've been able to uh, hire some great people. We retain great people. Uh, and the thing that allows us to do that is our culture. Um, and, and often when we're hiring people, we're not comp we compete, we compete on culture. We're not competing necessarily on uh, you know, economics. And sometimes we'll win a hiring battle with another company uh, that may be in a, a higher up the economical chain than we are, but we win on culture. Uh, so you know, that, that, that's the most important thing in my opinion is get great people and give them a great place to work. And that's what will help you win. Now, what a what a way to finish! Thank you for, for sharing that. One. Um, Great stuff. Thank you. Uh, we've, I'll just quickly throw that we've got one question in the in the Q and A, and I'll quickly pose that one, Andy. And we're in our final minute, so it's uh, perfect timing. 
Um, speaking about that, um, you know, the, building those teams and going on that innovation journey, questions come in. How do you go about bringing non-tech peers on that innovation journey with you? That's a really good question. Uh, again, lots of transparency and collaboration and communication. We have uh, very well established forums in the organization where uh, different heads of different departments, different stakeholders, middle management, senior exec all come together and talk about what's happening in the, in the technology part of the organization. Uh, that happens, there's one meeting that happens like clockwork every month where we will take the whole organization pretty much through everything that's happening in technology, what's happened in the last month, what's going to happen in the next six months, 12 months, what's changed, is there priority calls that need to be made, has something happened in the market that's going to be pivotal and change, change our strategy. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's about doing that all the time. So we're taking, as much as we're on a journey with technology, the whole business is on that journey as well. So it's all about communication and alignment and i think one of the things that's really powerful at everlight is that we're we're good we're good strategically so uh, the business is very aligned around uh strategically where the whole organization is trying to get to then the tech strategy forms a component of that but it rolls up really well uh and uh, you know as a as, as a member of the global exec i can say that you know our exec team are very aligned and kind of work well together and i think that's really important in any organization Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time today, Andy. Thank you, Katrine, for your questions and, and your help and, and to Grace and Thor and, and everyone at ThoughtWorks for helping set up today. I posted a survey link there in the chat um, for everyone, but uh, we'll send out an email after this um, as well. Um, with that, I want to thank everyone for giving us half an hour of their lunchtime today. Um, uh, in as much as I think we've all um, grown a bit wary of making plans too far ahead and who knows what will happen, we are planning to have the next one of these um, on Thursday, uh, May 13. It's always fun to try and plan these things ahead, but that's what we've got penciled in for now. We'll uh, let you know close with the date. Um, keep an eye on LinkedIn and, and your emails and all those sort of bits and pieces. And by all means, give us your feedback on today. And um, thanks everyone for your time. And we'll see you again in a couple of weeks. <laughs>